Hello everybody. Well, today we've got a really special video I think you're going to enjoy. Uh, some of you guys are going to find very informative. Some of you guys are going to be, eh, knew that already. Something that uh, I wonder if many of you have thought about. When you're at the range, your indoor air-conditioned, climate-controlled range, and you're blowing off 150 uh, rounds of ammunition, drawing from the hip, because you're not going to have an encounter with somebody where you're going to need your gun and it's going to be out ready. Okay? It's going to be in your holster, right? Okay, so yesterday I went with to an undisclosed location with an undisclosed person, unnamed person, uh, who is a SWAT trainer here in Arizona. And he showed us some techniques in the proper police technique and yes, it's cold outside while I'm wearing my hood. Uh, the police technique for drawing your weapon from a holster. It's about a 20 minute video. And on top of it, he showed us a really special place that I think some of you guys are really going to like. I know, I was drooling out both sides of my mouth. So, let me know what you think of it. Please comment. Um, we are going to be getting together with this person many, many times in the future. He is a new friend. And... Uh, uh, he's going to bring a wealth of knowledge to Arizona 1911 fan. So we will see you guys on the other side of the video. Thanks a lot. To be fluid in my movement, okay? And what we do realize is, and we've done this force on force training with simunitions, okay? You get one, I get one. I am not going to stand here right, I'm moving and let you paint me. <laughs> and cops don't do that, yeah. which is another thing that feeds that 11% mortality rate at 10 feet is, it's one of these things here, you know, they're moving, you know. Well, in qualification time, they stand here with their feet cemented on the ground right in front of a target that's static. All it does is move like this, and that really doesn't mirror, you know, what, what is likely to happen in, in, in any sort of an engagement. And, and that's another uh, another problem. So everything that we do is, and I tell you this, whatever you pick up, rifle, pistol, shotgun, there's no reason to drastically modify your behavior. None whatsoever. The pistol is an extension of the hand. The rifle is a modular extension of the body or the arms. That's it. There's, there's no difference. You do not push a grocery cart down the aisle like this. So why move like that with a pistol? Why stand like that in an open air environment when you have to have speed, flexibility, mobility when an engagement is this close? Do you see what I'm saying? So what we tell people is you're going to stand like you normally stand. And I say that your feet are, are basically shoulder width apart, that you don't need this big wide combat stance. But the balance is kind of a quasi-athletic stance. The balance is on the balls of the feet. It's not on the heels of the feet. This is typically what I see with the female shooters. That's what they look like. You can go up with a with a finger and go boop, and you'll push them over. Okay? Those people are not ready to move. Okay? But all we've got to do, now watch, this is the only modification we make. We're standing here like this, and we're going to basically bring our head forward like so, right in here. And when we do that, the balance moves from the heels to the balls of the feet, okay, and there's a slight break in the elbow. So I just bring the head down like this. Now the weight moves to the balls of the feet instead of the heels. It's a very, very simple concept, okay? What we also don't want are people shooting like this because recoil energy transfer does this. There's no pivoting at the shoulder. Nobody here is running a hand cannon. So when the gun goes into recoil, when the gun goes into recoil, it's just a little pop. Through kinesiology and bone support, we are going to manage that muzzle flip. This is recoil. That's all it is. Okay? We think of recoil this way. Recoil is nothing more than a slide doing that. Okay? Muzzle flip means it's got to go, all that energy's got to go somewhere. So the muzzle comes up a little bit. Okay? But what we've got to do is use bone support to lock that pistol in so you can shoot fast. All right? This right here, boom, is a slower recovery of the subsequent sight picture than that shot sequence. And oftentimes people steer the gun back in. That's wrong. You don't want to do that. Okay? What you want to be able to do is shoot a multiple shot sequence hard and fast and use that bone support to manage muzzle flip. 
So when that energy dumps, the bone support takes my, my sight picture right back to the same spot every time. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? And that's basically what we're after. We call this a modified isosceles or a close quarter battle position, CQB. Okay? So our feet are shoulder width apart. You can have one foot slightly behind the other. The head comes forward, and your hands from the draw sequence will always begin up here by your chest. Don't stand here like this and say, give me your best shot right here, okay? Even if it's an athletic type of a deal where you're shooting IPSC or IDPA or something like that, you always want to be at the ready because when you come down on that pistol, you want to try to acquire a master grip in the holster, you understand? The last thing you want to do is try to, under some sort of physical stress, cognitive stress, is bring your hands up here and sweep the gun out of the holster. A lot of people have retention devices on their holster. A lot of them now, especially coppers, they have to push down, rock forward. It's a 12-step program to get your friggin' gun out of the holster. <laughs> and it's ridiculous. All because we've lost situational awareness and we don't eat red meat, drink whole milk, and, and lift weights in the gym anymore. You know, I don't know. But that's, that's a big part of it, okay? So we're coming straight down in here. You. Boom. Straight down in here. Okay? So what we're going to do is acquire that master grip from this spot right here, okay? Then, the draw sequence, very simply. The first step is, this support hand stays here in the center of the chest. I keep my eyes focused downrange, the target of the threat area, and I simply clear and rock forward like this, okay? This is called a modified retention position, all right? If I have to shoot because somebody's on top of me, I can do that. All I've got to do is roll the gun outboard slightly so the slide clears the chest. Okay? And I don't impede its function. That's all we're doing here. And I keep the forearm parallel to the deck and the butt of that magazine basically driven into the lower rib. All right? That's retention. Okay? Again, this is all part of the draw sequence. Now, we know the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And that's what we're going to do with the pistol is draw a straight line. There's no bowling. A lot of people will draw and come up like this. If you ever have taught that, I'm telling you right now, the first thing you're going to do is shoot the ground before you shoot what you're supposed to, okay? We have lots of shootings where we have seen that happen. We just had one at I-17 at Dunlap two weeks ago, okay? And it's one of these things, and it was one of my own guys, and incidentally, he shot the little toe off of his partner, okay? And, and, and that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. My we're bad. accountable for everything that goes down range. So he comes out, startle effect like this, and just starts hammering on the way up until he hits the guy. That's wrong. That's not, that's not what we want. What we want to be able to do is draw the pistol here, bring the, the, the gun to the center of the body here. The hands meet in the center of the body. My head stays forward, and you're going to see this wrist right here. I point my thumb on the support hand where I want to shoot, and I open up the hand just like this, okay? We don't live in England or Canada, and you ain't serving up a cup of tea. <laughs> we don't do this right here, okay? Because you're you're pulling leverage away from the gun. And, and and when I first came out here, I saw a lot of people shoot the gun like this. And you would see the gun go into recoil like this, and it would come completely out of the hand. You might as well be standing there doing this, shooting with one hand. What's the point of having two hands on the gun? Control. 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 Okay? I shoot better with two hands on a gun. So what I do is, from the holster, I come here, and I'm blending all these movements. Here's one, here's two, here's three, and then the push, and watch the finger. As I move to the sight picture, I move my finger to the trigger shoot. I move my finger off the frame to the trigger shoot. I'm multitasking. I'm prepping that trigger, because I've already made the conscious decision to fire before I've unholstered the gun. Okay? So rule number three, remember what I said about it being taken out of context? Used to look like this. Here, here, and then here. Okay? So what my shooters were doing was getting a running start from the frame under time compression, physical and cognitive stress. And when you do that, when you do this real hard as a right-handed shooter, the sight goes this way, low and left, low and left, low and left, every single time. Low and left, okay? So we don't want to do that. What we want to do is 
treat this trigger on a Glock. Who's shooting something other than a Glock? Me. What, what are you shooting? Shoot CZ 75B. Okay. Okay. Is that a? It's a double action pistol. Single action. Okay. Do you have take up like this? No. Okay. All right. What do you got? Uh, Kimber Pro Carry Two. Yeah, Kimber. Okay. Sig P229. Sig 229. Or it's PT11. Okay. For starters, whether you have a two-stage trigger, this is a safe action trigger, okay, according to Glock. But look, okay, some of you, all of you probably have varying degrees of this, take up or slack. Get rid of it. Get rid of it on presentation, you understand? So as we're presenting the gun and pushing it to the target and trying to acquire the sights on that same focal plane, I am staging or prepping the trigger, okay? So when I get to... This spot right here, I come back and transition focus onto the front sight and make sure that alignment's good, then the trigger is already prepped. My finger's on the trigger. Trigger finger placement, this is another thing, can't be overlooked. No matter what you put in your hands, you've got to have gap between the finger and the frame. Under time compression, when you mash that trigger, and you will, and I'm going to tell you right now, I mashed the trigger up here too, okay? You've got to be able to shift gears. You go hard, fast, and dynamic here, your surgical precise back there. Each require different types of behavior out of you. Mm -hmm. You can't take the three yard behavior to the 25 yard line. If you do that, you're not going to hit your target. You're going to be off the left edge. And outside of you, is there any other left handers? Me. Okay, left handed. Okay, world's made for right handed people, you know this. So everything I, I refer to is right handed mirror image left handed. Got okay. it. Okay, all right. Uh, so anyway, finger that'll, placement that'll is right special here. People left. Pad That's true. of the finger, pad of the finger on that trigger shoot. If you're in here like this and you got every bit of that finger you can get in there, when you do this, the finger bumps up against the frame and you have asymmetrical pull, you're going to push the gun. Okay, whether you're right or left-handed, you're always going to push the gun. What people don't understand is it still takes time for the bullet to clear the end of the muzzle. The gun is always in motion. So everybody knows they have to put the front sight center of mass of whatever they're shooting, but why does it go there? Real simple. The answer to the test is this. Do not disturb the sight picture when you pull the trigger to the rear. It's that simple. Okay? If the bullet is not going where you want it to go, then you have one of two problems. Both are behavioral. One is, I'm not working the trigger the right way. Two is, my sight alignment is jacked up. Okay? It's really that simple, all right? So I get the perfect side alignment, and then I stage and press that trigger without disturbing the side alignment. That gives me the hit, okay? So we're standing here. Now we're going to blend everything together. So you guys just kind of step around right here, okay? What we're going to do is we start here, and then we're going to draw the pistol, and it really doesn't have to be much faster than that. Notice the draw. Just notice the draw. I'm standing here, and I come up, and I push. I'm bringing the pistol up towards the chin. Don't bring it from the bottom of your structure, okay? Because in essence, what we're doing is we're driving it from the bottom up like this, which means I'm not going to see the front sight as long as I need to see it. I'm looking where I want to shoot first, and I've got to get my I've got to get my sights on that spot, okay? And I do that right here with this push. I see that front sight into that spot. I've staged the trigger. I've prepped it. I'm ready to go. I refine the hold and press without disturbing the sight picture. It's that simple. Notice the support hand. This is the last thing. The support hand. Okay. Remember I said it ain't a cup of tea. And you're not shooting a revolver. It's a revolver grip that's interlocking the thumbs. That's not to say you can't shoot well that way. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to shoot as well as you could. You don't see IPSC, IDPA, world champion shooters shoot an auto loader like this. They don't do that. Right here, joint lock. Straight, locked wrist, fit the gun in there. These four fingers on these three fingers right here, okay? Which hand does most of the gripping? If you're right-handed, it's your left hand. This hand is not here just to hold up 22 ounces. It's to provide control, okay? So what happens is I put a firm handshake on the gun here, high on the back strap. No gap between the back strap and the web of the thumb. I'm right here. Okay, that's my master grip, all right? This hand right here opens up to receive the gun and I stack the thumbs. Lock wrist, stack thumbs right here. Head goes forward, 
okay? The support hand does most of the gripping. What I'm trying to do is through that grip, you gotta stay tight, but not so tight that you induce tremor. What I'm doing here is I'm isolating the movement to this knuckle forward, okay? If you shoot loose and there's a sympathetic response in all of the bones and muscles and ligaments in your hand, you're going to disturb the sight picture. The bullet is not going to go where you want it to go. It won't go there, okay? And you're going to walk up there like a bobblehead doll and go, I don't get it, okay? Well, that's because you're shooting loose. So we got to stay tight and eliminate any other movement in any other part of the hand. So the only thing that's moving is that finger right there. That's it. So when I'm up here nice and tight, Okay, stack, I even take this thumb and push down a little bit, okay? Notice I'm not here like this. It's not like this, okay? It's not like this, all right? I'm not locking anything, I'm, I'm right on top of them, just like that, that's what it looks like, okay? So that's the grip, okay? In the open air environment, CQB stance, athletic, natural, shoulder width apart, how you walk and run naturally, that's what we do, okay? No reason to change your behavior. Now, if I were going to maximize the use of cover, then I would go into that modified weaver position and maximize use of cover and minimize exposure to the threat. But what position are you in if I say, shoot underneath that car? You're kneeling, you're squatting, you're... You're prone, you're prone. unconventional, you're whatever it takes to not get hit, right, and deliver the goods. Okay? I'm in this position. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so that, that's basically the idea is, you know, what, whatever the environment gives you is, is, is how you, you handle the gun. That's the position that you take up with a gun. Okay? Very, very simple. All right? All right. Now, when we load, okay, whenever you do magazine exchanges, okay, don't ever bring the gun down here. All right? If you had a Sims gun and I had a Sims you'd get it right here on top and it would hurt okay don't ever take your eyes off the threat I tell my guys all the time if you can't load your gun without looking at it you can't do it at nighttime okay you, all you need to be able to do okay when you do tactical exchanges is sit there I tell my people to do this a basic skill set rotate the mags just like this remember wax on wax off Mr. Miyagi okay you can sit there in front of the TV and do this do it with your eyes closed I don't care but if you cannot load and manipulate your pistol, you're not trained with it without looking at it. You see what I'm saying? Okay? Basic skill set. Very, very basic stuff. Okay? Now, question. When I do this, is the gun loaded? No. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There's load and chamber. Remember, all guns are loaded. Yes? All guns are loaded. Treat yeah. it that way. That's kind of a tricky-dicky question. Yeah. Okay? But, but, I'm loaded. As soon as I load a source of ammunition in the gun, the gun is loaded, okay? Now I'm chambered, right? So I'm loaded and chambered, load and chambered, okay? Everybody carries the gun loaded and chambered, right? Mm -hmm. You should. If you don't, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to pull the trigger on a cold chamber when your life matters. That's not good, okay? If I have time, I do a fun, uh, press check, basically a chamber check. I have my grip tape here for that reason, okay? I do not advocate my recruits do this. I have them work from behind the ejection port on the breech block. This is the breech block, okay? So back here, I'm looking for a stick of brass. I let it go. I give it a bump, make sure the slide is locked up in the battery, okay? That's it. Now the gun is loaded and chambered, okay? So that's loading and chambering. When you're doing your tactical empty gun reloads, all that good stuff, and you're up here, okay, you bring the pistol in here, okay, you bring the pistol in here just like this. I'm looking over the top of that muzzle, I've broken or compromised the master grip, I get the mass of the thumb on the magazine release, and I move the support hand to the next source of ammunition all at the same time, so I'm here just like this, okay. It's mag off, it's mag on, real simple, okay. Back into the waistband, I manage gear and equipment later when I have time, all right. When you do a tactical exchange or an empty gun reload, you do them as quickly as you can, the same rate of speed, okay? Because you don't know how long a lull could last. And whether you're a competitive shooter or whether you're fighting for your life, you, you, you're, you're not prophetic enough to determine, you know, where that next bullet's coming from. So just keep those things in mind, all right? So there you go. There are some excellent techniques. I think the only techniques for uh, drawing from the holster...
I think that if you adopt those, you're going to be a much better shooter, much faster shooter, much more accurate shooter. And uh, please, if you don't have the ability to draw from the hip at your range, figure out a way, go outdoors, go to the woods, go to the desert, figure some place that you can practice. And if you cannot find any of those places, please dry fire. When you dry fire, make sure there's no ammunition anywhere in the room. And go ahead and dry fire. I practice dry firing from the hip uh, usually 20 to 30 times a night because you are not going to be on the ready uh, in ready position when the bad guy comes. So you need to be ready and 90% of negligible, negligible discharges or accidental discharges happen while drawing. Also, uh, a couple things that he did, I did not catch on camera. There's no reason to reholster your, your weapon or your gun quickly. Take your time reholstering. That's another time that negligible discharges happen. Uh, one of the things that he he said about the 11% mortality rate. He said it is a proven statistic. Police shootings, there is an 11% mortality rate. And he said at the very beginning he loved the fact that we had six guys there that were carriers. Uh, funny thing was everybody was pastor. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a group of pastor shooters. Um, it's a good thing that more people are carrying because cops are in Arizona anyway, are required to uh, requalify once a year. And some cops, believe it or not, only draw their weapons for practice once every six months. It's a fact. Cops are not good shooters for the most part. That's why you'll see a shootout in Hollywood, you know, 1,600 rounds went down at that Hollywood shooting and 72 hits. Something's wrong with that, guys. Practice, practice, practice. Work on your draw. If you have any questions, please give me a call. We will revisit this many times in the future, and we will revisit with uh, that particular trainer many more times in the future. Uh, it was one of the best days of my life. I had a great time. So thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you very, very soon. Bye. Oh. Does anybody else hear angel singing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank heaven we've got class five A armory builder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, this is what oh, I want for Christmas yes. next year. Wow. Is it would it be improper for me to take some pictures? Just for this would that hurt somebody's no. face? No, I don't think so. Just if you broadcast it, don't broadcast. No, 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 no. Just no. This isn't for me to goof off and tell my wife. This is what a gun safe looks like. <laughs> this is an amazing gun safe. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's fun. Hey, Case. Why are you guys get to play with it? Oh. Wow. This is Trace Jobs. First block. Over there, smile. Here's Andrew. Like, I have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> one of these, and one of those, and two of those. And <laughs> right? Oh.